This is Rick again with another Bible lesson. Now last week, what did we study? We studied the sufferings and the patience of Job, okay? And so um, this week, I didn't have a chance to clarify exactly the outcome. We looked at some of it towards the end there, but I want to recap and look at Job's suffering but I want to look at it from what Job learned. Three things that Job learned are Job become better as a better Christian and closer to his God. So that's going to be the lesson today. This is Job, and this is what he learned. And, and the five generations he lived after the suffering, and he lived, I think, 140 years. We're going to look at that. And it's good, so we're going to look, see what Job learned from, from suffering and, and, and God showing him the secret sin that he had in his heart that he didn't realize, and he got it right. But first of all, we're going to go ahead and get back to our memory verses, okay? Now, last week we done three trivial questions at the beginning of the lesson before we done Job uh, part one. This is going to be Job part two, okay? So let's go ahead and, and do some new verses today, and then we will uh, maybe go back to trivia next week and then do the same verses the following week that we're going to do today. Today I want to do a little something different. I want to take a subject, and we'll use four verses. Now, we won't quote all the verses, uh, all the verse of every one of the verses. We'll just get the main part. We want to look at judging or how to judge, when to judge, and what to judge, okay? So we're going to do that. It's just four it's four, four verses, but again, they're going to be short, and, and you'll see where I'm coming from, okay? So let's do this right here, uh, verses, Bible verses on judging, and let's see, let's see some good things out of this, okay? So number one, the verse that you always knew, but you don't know where it's at, okay? This is going to be, judge not that you be not judged. Does anybody know where that verse is? Okay, you like me, you, it took a while for us to remember. It is Matthew 7, 1. Matthew 7, 1. So let's do this verse together. Matthew 7, 1. Judge not that you be not judged. Okay? Now the second verse we want to look at is John 4, 7, 24. So you got Matthew 7, 1. This is John 7, 24. The scripture says this right here, judge not according to appearance, but, but, but judge righteous judgment, okay? Judge not according to appearance, but judge according to truth, according to knowledge, okay? So that's another one. So the first one, we're not to judge others and without knowledge, okay? Then it says we can judge, but judge righteously according to the Word of God. What does the Bible say? Number three, this is for our Christian here, 1 Corinthians eleven thirty one. It says if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Now this is referring to the Lord judging us. The wicked will always judge you. Your, your so-called friends and enemies and competitors will always judge you. But the scripture says again, it's 1 Corinthians 11.31. Let's do it together. 1 Corinthians 11.31. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Okay? 1 Corinthians 11.31. Okay, then the, the fourth one that we quoted in last lesson, and I believe the lesson before, it's 1 Corinthians 4, 5. It's the first part of the verse. And it says, therefore, judge nothing before the time till the Lord come. Okay, till the Lord comes. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Now, this is not every situation. These are the situations where you can't win and it can't be resolved. Just wait for the Lord and he'll take care of it. So let's recap. Judge not that you be not judged, Matthew 7, 1. 
Then the scripture says, John 7, 24. Um, judge not according to appearance, what we might see, but judge righteously. Judge according to what's right. And then 1 Corinthians eleven thirty one. if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And then, in some cases, 1 Corinthians 4, 5, judge nothing before the time till the Lord comes. He'll take care of it. Okay, that's going to be our memory verses for probably at least three or four times where we can get the verses down, and we'll, we'll have that. So let's go into Job, part number two. Okay, I want to briefly take about maybe six or eight minutes and review from last week. If you did not get a chance to see last week's lesson, okay, about Job, the suffering and patience of Job, I think it's worded exactly like that, you might want to watch that video first, and this one will make better sense, although we're going to review quickly. Okay, here's, here's, the, here's the thing. Job was the richest in the, in the East, okay? He was a man that feared God and eschewed evil. That is, he was perfect in the sense that he had a desire to serve God and want to serve God, okay? He sacrificed for his children lest they have uh, have sin in their heart, he said, and, and sin against God. So he was faithful. He was faithful in his in his in his endurance. He was faithful in his sacrifice as far as. But notice though, he didn't sacrifice for himself. We've seen a little bit of a. Well, what's going on there? Why didn't you sacrifice for yourself? Job goes on, and he's a competition. Satan asked God, said, God, let me touch him, and he'll curse you to your face. And he said, well, everything that he has, you can take away. And you remember the story, all was taken away as children, all the um, she-asses, all the oxen, all his servants, everything was taken away. And he said, blessed be the name of the Lord, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. We remember that, and that's the part where we remember the well. The patience of Job, the faithfulness of Job looking to God. But we see that three friends came in, and we see that they sat seven days and didn't say a word. They saw the grieve, the grieving that Job was going to. Remember the second time Satan asked that he could take uh, and and put balls, take, take his life, and God said, no, you can't take his life, but you can put affliction on his body. And he had... From the crown of his head to the tip of his toes, he had boils, okay? Big old boils, sores. And he was out there probably in the dump, if you will, where the trash. And he took pottery and he scraped the places and he was in agony and pain. And you know, sometimes your your judgment's mis, miscalculated. You, 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 you're irritable when you go through these things. He was going in un unamount of pain that we probably have never experienced. Now, his three friends sat with him seven days, and then they start to debate. Back in those days, they would debate what was going on. One would debate, and the other would answer. One would debate, and the other one. Well, there's three friends, so they went back and forth. Every friend would have his turn, then Job would respond. He'd have another friend, and Job would respond. They did this for three rounds. And they never touched. They said a lot of good things that we can see through these, this book that was true. But it wasn't touching Job's, Job's problem. Job's, he wanted a mediator. He wanted someone, he wanted someone that he could, he could go between to say, look, I would tell my cause if I could just talk to God face to face. I need someone to be a daysman, a, a, a lawyer, if you will, between. And by the way, God intervened there at the end. And then we see one more Bildad. And then we see one more challenged Job and got closer to the truth than the other three friends. But then chapter 40, chapter 41, God breaks in. And he asks Job, he said, Job, where was you when I, found, when I made the foundations of the earth? When I set everything in order, when I set the moon, the stars, the galaxies, the, the sea, everything, where was you? And Job, basically, he asked him 84 questions that Job eventually just put his hand on his mouth and said, I am a man without knowledge. 
And so God began to show Job. And then Job's problem was that he had pride in his life. Yes, Job. Job probably was, was influenced by his friends pushing him because we want to defend ourselves. And when we get defending ourselves, we get prideful about it. We start defending and we're not letting God defend us. We're not uh, uh, justifying God. We begin to justify ourselves. And so we see that Job was a self-righteous man. He had pride. And, and so then God intervened. Now we're going to look at chapter number 40 of the book, Luke, I mean uh, Job. Let's go to Job. Job chapter 40. And the Bible says um, in chapter 42, let's go to chapter 42. This is Job. And then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withheld from thee. So we see that now Job is saying, God, I, I had a blind spot. Everyone has a blind spot in their life. Hopefully we have seen them. Hopefully we're working on them. Hopefully we're letting the grace of God, the power of God, the Holy Spirit of God lead us away from these problems that we have. All of us have blind spots. We're the last one to probably see it, okay? But God can show it out, show it to us. Okay, verse number six, well, verse number five, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, Job is speaking, but now my eyes seeth thee. I understand, I seeth thee. I understand that I don't know everything. And there was a blind spot, and he was thankful. Verse number six, there, wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes, he repented, repented of his pride, his self-righteousness. He said, God, I've, I've been arguing with them. I've been trying to prove my innocence, and, and, uh, and God knew it, but he was trying to prove it. We don't need to prove. We need to live and let God handle and let God show the results. Now, if they are your enemy, if they just wanting to find something, you're not gonna you're not gonna win the argument anyway. Let God take care of your arguments. Let God take care of it. Now we see also that the scripture says in verse 9, Job 42, verse 9, the Lord also accepted Job. When Job repented, God accepted him. Christian, we have to often repent. And say, Lord, I, I, I'm sure, Lord, I, I didn't judge that right. Lord, I'm judging when I'm not supposed to be. Or, Lord, I'm not judging myself when I need to be judging myself. And being quiet, being swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. We're not doing that a lot of times. And we need to work on that by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit of God. And say, God, help me. Help me to judge myself. Help me to see, keep short account of sin. And God will accept us. Now, we already accepted in Christ as our salvation. I'm not talking about losing your salvation. We're not referring to losing your salvation. Job was a just man. Job was saved. We're talking about the fellowship. We're talking about the rewards. We're talking about the rewards and fellowship with God right now. We're not talking about salvation. Salvation is in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is sealed to the day of redemption. But we're talking about fellowship. So God accepted him. Now then, the scripture said that Job, that, well, God told the three friends to go and sacrifice an offering of ignorance, an offering of forgiveness to Job because they judged him wrong. And they willfully did this, by the way. They willfully did it. And the scripture says that Job would pray for them, and he did. That is, God, I forgive. I accept my friends. I forgive You've forgiven me, I forgive them, and Job prayed for them. And then the scripture says, so the Lord blessed the latter end more than the beginning. More than the beginning. Now, I want to I I read verse 16 and 17. Then we're going to see shortly the three things that he learned. Verse 16, after this, Job lived 140 years. After the suffering, 140 years. Now watch this right here. And saw his sons and his sons' sons, even the fourth generation. 
140 years. Now listen to this right here. This is wonderful. This is what we, we, we left with last, last week, the ending, and this is good. So Job died being full, being old and full of days. He was, he was full of days. He said, I, I'm living my life. I'm seeing my, uh, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. Because remember, God gave him twice as much back. So he had 10 children and he had 10 more. 10 was already in heaven. He didn't have 20 because 10 was already in heaven. They were saved. You don't lose your loved ones when they're saved and go to heaven. When they die, they're saved, they go to heaven. You don't lose them. He had 10 more children and he saw his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, up to four generations. Now, let's, let's learn. Let's see what Job learned in this trial of affliction. We don't like suffering. Who likes suffering? You, you, you want to raise your hand and say, I like suffering? None of us probably like suffering. Shake your pointed head right there, like that, right there. No, 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 no suffering. We do not like suffering, but suffering brings us closer to the Lord, and the Lord's going to allow suffering sometimes in our lives to renew us, to see, let us see things that we don't see. So number one, quickly, three points, and we're going to be through with this lesson. Watch this right here now. This is good. This is good. Number one, after the suffering, after everything was, was said and done, by the way, his friends reunited with him, his family, all gave him a piece of money. How about that? To get Job started back, and Job accumulated twice as much by his, his wisdom, his hard work, and he had twice as many as he had before. He had twice as many oxen, sheep, uh, uh, servants. Then he had his 10 children after then. What a blessing. What a blessing. Now watch this right here. Number one, Job was closer to his God than before the suffering. Now get that right there now. Job was closer to God after the suffering than before. Isn't that our goal, to be closer to God, to know God? That's what Paul said, that I may know him. Talking about Jesus Christ and his sufferings. And, 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 and know him in a real... And Job suffered. And Paul suffered. You're not going to... You're not. There's certain things in your life that you're not going to be able to overcome or see some things without suffering. And that, that, that's, that's just elementary. I know it's not good and we, we don't pray for it to happen, but if you we handle it right, let me say this, if we handle it the right way and let God, let God be God and show us, we'll come out on the other side and we'll say, God, I'm closer to you than I ever have been before. I want to read a scripture from the book of uh, Psalms, okay? We're going to go to Psalms 119. And we're going to read these three verses. Then we're going to go to number two. So number one, Job is closer to God than ever before. Let me read these verses about suffering. And we're going to move on. Now the Bible says this right here. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant. Okay, talking about this child of God. O Lord, according to thy word. See, that's how he's going to work it. He's going to work it according to his word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. Here's where, here's where it comes. Good, good servant, good, good knowledge, good judgment sometimes comes through a trial of affliction. If we handle it right, if we don't handle it right, we're not going to receive the blessing, and somewhere down the line we might have to go through it again. It's better to go through it the first time and say, Lord, what are you showing me? If it's repentance, if it's something in my life, something I need to stop, something I need to start doing, do it. It'll be better off. Now, for I have believed thy commandments. Now listen to this verse 67 right here. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. You know, if God just left us alone and, you know, you you you, you got a child. If you got a child, a grandchild, or or you see children, they, they have to be corrected. Or else they, 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 they're never going to learn anything. They're never going to learn life. <laughs> a child that's left to himself bringeth the, his mother to shame. Mother and father to shame, the scripture says. The book of Proverbs, okay? Now, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But watch this right here. But now I have kept thy word. 
Wow. How about this right here? Verse number 71. It is good for me. Boy, when we go through the trials, it's hard to say that. We can't say that usually going through the trial. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Can you say that? Can you say, God, your hand has taught me, or I'm going through some trials right at this moment, and I know that I'm being afflicted. Now, sometimes it's the devil. Sometimes we cause our own problems, but then sometimes God intervenes, even when we cause our own problems. He'll intervene. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes, thy commandments, thy word. Thy word of hid in my heart, and I might not sin against thee. It's good when that happens. So number one, Job was closer to his God, to his Savior, Jesus. And that's the same way we should be. Applied to us today, we'll be better off on the other side. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. And when the past has come, we'll be on a, a better side. We'll be a better person, a better Christian, a better life. A lover of the commandments of God if we let God let go and let God okay let go and let God number two number two now watch this right he was he was better he was he was more true to himself to himself now we don't focus on self so much but he was good to himself Okay, do thyself no harm, Job. Job said, I'm not going to do myself any more harm. I'm not going to be arguing with people no more. I'm not going to be debating with people no more. Job learned his lessons. And by the way, I think his three friends did too. They learned their lesson. It's not, it's not good. It's not bad. They had truth. They had a lot of good truth. But it wasn't applying. Let God apply. Let God. Preachers need to preach and let the Word of God show them what they need to do. The, teach the Word of God. Let the Word of God, the Holy Spirit of God, teach the person what you've heard me say it. If, you, if you've heard me say it one time, you've heard me say it a few times. We're to proclaim the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit of God tell you what He wants you to do or lead you in a way that's right. Lead me in a way that's everlasting. Job was better to himself. He says this right here, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. He said, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. That's one of the verses that we looked at earlier. If we, if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Job was judging himself. Lord, I, I, I said I. Lord, I, I meant me and you by your grace. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Can you say that? Paul said, I am, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ. And that's you and I. Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live now in the flesh, I live, Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's not I. Paul, Job is not saying I will contain my integrity. I will not do this. I will. It's no, Lord, by your grace, by your mercy, by your power of the Spirit of God. Christian, the power of the Spirit of God is what gives us victory. Not ourselves. Get the eye out. Iratus, if you got Iratus, no. Job was closer to himself. He was truer to himself. No more, no more proving. No, no, more, no more defending himself against his neighbors, against his friends, against, even against God. He just said, Lord, you're right. And I'm going to live for you. I'm going to justify you, God, in everything. That's what Job learned. He was truer to himself afterwards. Number one, he was closer to God. Number two, he's truer to himself. He's not going to be arguing. He's going to do that which is right. He's just going to let the Lord take care of it. He's truer to himself. And that's what we need to be, truer in saying, it's not me, but by the grace of God, I am what I am by the grace of God. Number three, number three. He was closer to his friends. Now watch this right here now. Think about it now. Remember, God told the three friends, says, you bring a sacrifice. You, you get an offering. You, you've wronged your friend Job. And Job is wrong too. I've corrected Job. And Job is accepted. And Job is, 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 is repented. Now you repent. And Christian, I got a question for you. Have you been judging your friends? 
Do you throw th things around your friends behind their back that you say to other people and then you wouldn't say it to their face? You're being a hypocrite, first of all. You're not being a true friend. You're judging when you're not supposed to be judging. And whatever you judge, you're going to get it back to you. That's what the scripture says. Okay? But he was closer to his friends. Can you just let your friends be the be what they what 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 God wants them to be? Can you can you say, Lord, bless my friends? Now, last week we said that we should pray for our friends and be closer to them. Then I said we should even pray for our enemies. And I, I put a little comment in there. I said, okay. Let's just work on the friends right now. <laughs> Can you say to a, 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 an enemy, God, they meant it for evil, but you can bring something good out of it. Just like Joseph said. Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God can bring it out good if you'll let him. If you'll let him, will you surrender that will and that, that pride and say, Lord, I'm going to surrender to you. I'm going to be swift to hear you. I'm going to be swift to hear the word of God. I'm going to be slow to wrath. And I'm going to be slow to speak, slow to wrath, and let God handle my problems. He was closer to his friends. He was closer to his friends. Remember, 140 years. He lived 140 years after then. You, you reckon Job regretted it? Now, during the suffering, Oh, my goodness, he cursed. He didn't curse God. He cursed his day, and he wished he had never been born. He said a lot of things that he regretted. But now on the other side, but I got a little news for you. When you go through a trial, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. When he is tried, he shall receive a crown from the Lord, a crown of righteousness from the Lord. That's going to be James 1.12, I believe it is. But listen to me, when you get over that one, the Lord will give you a little space usually. There's going to be another trial, and it's going to be a little bit bigger. <laughs> and if you've passed that one, there's going to be a bigger one. But all the whole time, you're getting closer and closer, hopefully closer and closer and further and closer to the Lord. Number one, Job was closer to God. Number one, number two, he was closer to himself and, and making sure he give God the glory. Not argue. Number three, he was closer to his friends and his family. Oh, my goodness. Boy, I bet him and Miss Job, because their name's not given. Miss Job, they had 140 years. Seen their children. Seen their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. What a, what, a, what, a, what a wonderful thing. Okay, I'm going to end this lesson at that. Job on the other side. Christians, we're going to go through trials. Jesus told us. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. You shall go through tribulation, he said. But I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. All right. Thanks again. Next week, we'll have a trivia question, three trivia questions, hopefully, and then a new lesson for the Word of God. All right. Thank you very much. And give you a little music at the end of here. All right. Thanks a lot. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that's